All right, today we're going to be conducting lab 2.1 and we're going to start with task one where we have 10 coins and our coins are dispersed by five on each side of our template. And then based off of that, we have two inner columns labeled H and T and we are supposed to move each of the coins to column T using both our, uh, let me double check that. <laughs> using I'm not sure I understand. Our dominant hand. So switching it. So we'll do 12 iterations of this and move on. So we've just completed lab 2.1 and through the two tasks that we did in between just putting the coins regardless if they were heads or tails into the H column and then going into task two of separating them based off of their orientation of heads and tails. Um, we can see that there was multiple stimuli that were represented in task one to task two. And for task one, we just had a singular um, stimuli represented. And we can see that based off of our time. Um, let me look at that. So my time for task one was 0 0.5667 um, on average for each coin to be moved. And then my uh, time average for each coin for task two was 0 0.7667 seconds for each coin to be moved. So there's a 0.2 difference um, on the time that it took from task one to task two because of that multiple stimuli represented. Um, we can relate this back to us walking and talking or focusing on singing our ABCs while we're trying to walk a certain way. That multiple stimuli is basically the bandwidth that we put towards a task or our um, capabilities of being able to multitask per se. Um, that's basically the main thing that we're getting at with with looking at chapter two and with this specific lab that we did with the coins compared to um, separating them and if you can notice in my videos um, I use different shapes of coins and uh, so with that it has different sizes different weight and I did that because of the previous labs that we have done in class. I kind of made this more of a transfer task because of us sliding coins and being able to kind of orient ourselves to coins on those multiple levels. And I wanted to see if it would take me more time to change my approach to each singular coin based off of the organization that we had to do for task one and two. So that's why I did that as opposed to having 10 um, coins that were identical. And now we're going to get into the next labs on the next video. So until next time.